Do you hate being poor? Do you want to be rich? Like me. If so, head over to Messy Modding Store for all your gaming needs where you can get GTA 5 cash and rank, GTA 5 modded accounts, and many more. And if you have any doubts, look at all these happy customers. So as many of you guys might know, there's been a new update for GTA 5. Originally called the Expanded and Enhanced Update, it's basically just the re-release for the current gen PS5 and Xbox Series S and X consoles. The trailer was very underwhelming, but information posted on the Newswire later on revealed that the game would run at 60fps and 4K and even include ray tracing technology. As someone who's played on PC and gets to experience more than 30fps, this is something I was really looking forward to. But as it turns out, this update has more than just 60fps. Let's check it out. Of course we gotta start off with the graphics. I don't have a 4K capture card or a 4K monitor for that matter, so all these tests will be in 1080p, however they should still give you a good impression of what the game will look like. Just assume the game will be a bit sharper than what it is. The game has three new graphics setting modes. Fidelity, which is 4K 30fps with ray tracing. Performance mode, which is 4K 60fps, except for on the Xbox Series S where it's 1080p 60fps, and this is without ray tracing and Performance RT mode, which is only on the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, which is 4K 60fps using ray tracing and probably at scale. There's hardly any difference between all three of the modes. Fidelity mode seems to have a little bit of extra foliage, and both modes that use ray tracing seem to have more accurate shadows. Note the extra pieces of grass on the hill on the left, and also the shadow of the motorcycle rider. It seems like the PS5 uses ray tracing only for shadows. When I change from performance mode to fidelity mode you can see the shadow of the wind will change. It becomes a lot softer and probably a bit more realistic. Again there's also a lot more grass that gets added. When I go from performance mode to performance RT mode in this clip, you can see the shadows of before they lose their jagged edges, they become a lot softer and nicer to look at, and also they join up better. However you can also notice that the reflections don't change. This probably means that Rockstar has only used ray tracing for shadows. It's a bit of a shame but it's understandable as it is very taxing on performance. It might have also required a lot more effort to code. Maybe in GTA 6 we'll see it. Speaking about reflections you can also see in the mirrors that they don't use ray tracing. Personally I'm fine with this, it would just be nice to have. 60fps is also a huge improvement, it makes the game so much more responsive to play. With more frames, that's more information going into your brain. The game's a lot smoother so you can easily keep track of things, and there's no more V-Sync half which added a lot of input delay, which we'll get on later. It's honestly a huge improvement and if you don't believe me, it's something you have to try. Now let's compare the graphics with PC and PlayStation 4. I'm only going to be using the fidelity mode to compare, as it looks the best, and I want to see what each system has to offer. On PC I'll be using the highest graphics settings possible, with the resolution set to 1080p and anti-aliasing off. I tried to match up the time of day as best as I could with director mode, but unfortunately as you have to pay extra for the story mode on PS5, I just had to guess. In this scene there's only a few things that I noticed. First up, the PS4 has a lot of weird artifacts. I think this could be down to the draw distance being a bit less. Ignoring that though, the detail level seems to be pretty high. However, even though the lighting has changed, the PS5 is noticeably sharper. PC really surprised me. It would have looked a bit better if I had anti-aliasing turned on. However, what I think is going on is the PS5 is rendering at a high resolution, no matter what monitor you're plugged into. This means on a 1080p screen, it would look miles sharper. You can simulate such an effect on PC. With frame scaling mode, you can force the game to render at a higher resolution. This makes the game look a lot more detailed, and it's probably what's happening on the PS5. However, the PS5 still has a lot nicer shadows. As they use ray tracing, they get diffused a lot more realistically. PS5 also brings new fire animation that you can see when you shoot guns. It looks a little bit more like real fire rather than just a flash. This is an effect on all guns, and as you can see, it looks quite good. Explosions also have a shockwave to them. You can see when I blow up cars, there's like a ripple through the air. Fire and smoke, in fact pretty much all particle effects in general, seem to have been improved. The cloud effects while flying are more prominent than PS4 and PC. So as you can see, between all three systems, there really isn't that much of an improvement. PS5 pretty much looks exactly like PC, except it has nicer shadows. With 60fps, I'd like to see how the motion blur compares.
when compared side by side, Fidelity seems to have a little bit more motion blur, but it's not that noticeable. The 60 FPS of the other two modes make it a lot more bearable though. I was quite curious to see how the load times would change on the next gen consoles. We already saw improvements when playing the older version of GTA 5 on the current generation consoles, and it seems like it's been sped up a little bit. The new menu lets you jump into what you want straight away. You can pick between just normal online and various different game modes. My PC has an Intel i7 and a Samsung 970 EVO SSD, so it should be quite quick. However, there are a lot of variables when it comes to online loading. The PS5 still clearly beats PC though by quite a substantial amount, so I think PS5 is definitely quicker. My PS4 seems to run into quite a lot of problems, but it's in the bottom right and it's way slower than even PC. I think anyone using the next gen consoles will be really happy with the loading times. PS4 is so slow because of that old hard drive. Hard drives seem to be less reliable than the SSDs as well. When trying to do this test, I encountered so many system crashes on my PS4. I think it would need like a clean reinstall of the software or GTA 5, but I doubt stuff like this will happen on the PS5 as much. So yeah, basically, PS5 better in every way than PS4. You can skip forward about 20 seconds now, but this is the time where I gave up and decided to leave PS4. Next gen consoles aren't without problems however. I encountered a few graphics bugs and when there's a lot of particle effects the frame rate seems to drop quite a bit. I haven't seen any examples where it goes below 30 though, which is a good start. While there isn't complete control like there is on PC over graphics settings, it's still nice to be able to control some things. Hopefully Rockstar add on this feature and allow us to fine tweak stuff like motion blur. Rockstar have also changed the menu a little bit. You can now load into invite only sessions, cruise sessions, friend sessions and even a solo mode straight from GT Online rather than having to go to story mode first. Rockstar have also changed the jobs menu but I'm not sure why they did this. It's not really that big of a change. On the PS5 version they've updated the game to work with the PS5 controller's adaptive triggers. I think it's a bit of a gimmick but if you like that stuff then sure. A change I like a little bit more than I should is you can now change your brightness while in GTA Online. You'd have to go back to story mode or create mode. Thank you very much Rockstar. For PvP players like me, input delay is a big thing. It's important for the game to feel responsive and it's the main reason why professional gamers will spend thousands on their equipment just so they can minimise input delay. Here I'll show the difference between PS4 and PC and then I'll compare it to PS5. Due to the issues I stated earlier, this is the PS4 version being played on a PS5 but you can still see a massive difference. From the trigger bottoming out to the gun actually shooting, it takes 52 frames. At 240 frames a second, that's 0.216 seconds. That's why so many people don't like playing on console. PC only takes 8 frames, that's 0.033 seconds, and that's almost 7 times faster. This can be affected by graphics settings, but knowing you can tweak everything, you can probably get it even lower. PS5 fidelity mode only takes 47 frames, that's 0.196 seconds, still pretty slow. Performance RT mode takes 27 frames, that's 0.113 seconds, and regular performance mode takes 28 frames. This difference between performance and performance RT could be completely down to human error, and all of these results that I got were measured scientifically, but there's a huge difference when playing on performance and performance RT mode, and it's way better than PS4 and PS5 fidelity. Overall it's a really good update, the 60fps makes it a massive game changer. Until Rockstar fixed the modest situation, I don't think I'm going to go back to PC anytime soon. I hope you guys found this video informative and if you did, smash that like button. I'll see you in the next video.